they've been pretty solid so far, numbers distance-wise. Punting this year, you guys obviously. Could you start over? I just heard you said they. No, uh, USC. Yeah, okay. The team you're playing this week. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did hear what you said. All good. Uh, look, distance-wise, they've been pretty consistent punting. They've been a little susceptible, susceptible to returns. You guys have had a little bit of a revolving door back there for a number of reasons. How confident are you in that group, and do you see opportunity for big plays there this week? Yeah, uh, you know, their punter does a nice job. There's sometimes where he'll out punt his coverage uh, from a distance standpoint. We anticipate to have Zion back there. Um, he's done a nice job, and we think he's got big play potential. Um, but it'll be a really good opportunity for him, you know, on Saturday. James, James, you, go ahead. James Alonzo Ford's a guy. He's preferred guys by the pleasant surprise. Curious how you evaluate his play for five games. Yeah, he's he's done a nice job. I know Dion uh, has been very very impressed with him, and so is the coaching staff. He's been a great teammate. Um, he's taken advantage of the reps that he's getting uh, and getting better. I think he's in some ways um, up to this point he probably was still working back into uh, you know play shape. hadn't hadn't played football in a while and had a pretty significant injury. So um, I think he's getting better every single week. So we've been very pleased with him. James, will you be able to double dip a little bit and re do some recruiting out there? I know you have some commits and probably some guys you might like to, 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 to look at. And how will you get around out there if you're doing that? Because it could be kind of complicated. Yeah, so um, we're going we're gonna to handle this uh, Friday like we've been handling all these other Fridays. I'll, I'll typically go out in the morning um, and then get back with the team and then go back out again at night. So we'll, we'll treat it just like we've been, been doing uh, up to this point. James, uh, Dom came back, started last week, but it seemed like he had a limited workload. Um, do you anticipate him taking another step forward in his involvement on defense? Yeah, you just, you know, when you're when you're in one of those casts, um, it affects you, you know, obviously. So, um, you know, getting comfortable with that, getting used to that. I thought he did a nice job last, last week, um, but I expect him to work closer towards. I don't know if it'll be exactly the same number of reps, but probably in between what he did uh, last week and what he's done in the past. Uh, but he's shown he was physical on kickoff, uh, was good on defense as well. So I think he has more confidence in playing that way. And I think the coaches have, have confidence in him being able to get the job done. James, you mentioned um, briefly Miller Moss Monday. His uh, completion percentage, touchdown to interception ratio stuck out to you. What do you think it is that he does well as a quarterback that allows him to have that success and thus what makes him a challenge to prepare for defensively? Well, I think the head coach does a really good job and has done a good job for a long time in terms of uh, offense and scoring points and, and producing yards. Um, and I think he, here's a guy that I think did it the right way, right? You know, he committed to, he committed to USC, excuse me. He committed to USC, um, was behind, you know, um, you know, the first pick in the draft, stuck it out, kept learning, uh, got into the bowl game and played really well. And he knows the system and he's prepared and he's ready to go. He can distribute the ball to his playmakers. They have playmakers. One of the more talented rosters that we played this year. Um, but he's kind of, in my mind, he's like your typical West Coast quarterback that knows how to distribute the ball. He's poised, he's calm, he's confident, he's accurate. He understands the system. He has confidence in the system, uh, and is playing really well for him. So um, I, I've been I've been impressed with him, um, and impressed with the system. Uh, James, how do you assess AJ Harris's play so far this season? Yeah, I think AJ's playing really well. He's a super competitive guy. Football is really important to him. Uh, I think he's really embraced our culture. Um, we've had a ton of good discussions with really all the transfers. With talking about kind of some of the similarities and some of the differences of being here. Um, but he's been great. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. Um, he's been great, and I think he's playing really well. He's getting more and more confident each week. Um, and I think Terry's doing a good job. We're playing a number of guys, you know, at the corner position. Hey, James, if you, if you notice a trend that you feel like you could take advantage of against an opponent, but it doesn't necessarily fit what you've been doing so far, how do you attack without changing what you're doing or changing your identity on offense or defense? Yeah, I, I don't think you, you do that. I don't know specifically what you're referencing, but um, I think that's where you have to be careful. You know, um, if 
if it's something you can do to attack a weakness or attack a scheme that fits in with things that you are already doing, then, then obviously you're going to do it. But to try to kind of recreate yourself in a week, um, that's, that's difficult to do, and I think that could be problematic. But that's also where you want to have enough diversity within your system on offense and defense that more times than not you can, you can take advantage of. Friday's typically your travel day. What will Friday look like for the team uh, out there? Um, so it, it will be, um, you know, similar. Uh, well, that's really kind of why we're doing this. We're just trying to keep our routine as similar as we possibly can. Um, so we'll, we'll do a fast Friday. A big part of that was finding a location that we felt comfortable having that type of practice because on Friday we do a lot of our game plan specific stuff. Uh, so being able to get into SoFi Stadium was, was very, very helpful and being able to keep our routine the same. So uh, pretty much very similar to what we would do here, obviously. Uh, or maybe I'd probably better say more of a traditional away game is, is probably the best way to say it. James, in games that have involved the team making a two time zone jump, the visiting team is one in eight of those games. Do you think there's anything else that could be going into that rather than just the long travel? Yeah, I was I was hoping that nobody would bring that up. Um, we, we're not focused on that or talking about that or concerned about that. We're focused on what we have to do, Penn State, um, to handle our business. But yeah, we're not we're not talking about that. James, how is Anthony Donko handling this week of practice and Nolan Rupshi getting that extended work last week? What did you see from him playing more than he ever did at Wisconsin? So I'm sure you're getting a good evaluation here. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you guys know we've been very, very pleased with Anthony, and um, you know we anticipate having him on Saturday. Uh, Rucci um, has been able to play and and play uh, well, uh, allow us to continue to do what we were want to want to do on offense. Um, I think he's gaining confidence and getting more comfortable, but that depth is important. Um, you know, we're going to have bumps and bruises throughout the year, uh, but. But we've been pleased with Donka really since the bowl game. Uh, and Rucci was a nice piece of the puzzle to bring in, and he'll continue to have a significant role for us moving forward. Is that helpful going forward when you talk to players in the transfer portal saying, hey, even if there's not an obvious opening for you here, you can play um, at a place like Penn State because of situations like that? Yes, but as you can imagine, the guys that we want to recruit, they they want to, they see themselves as starters. They're not coming in for a depth deal. So more times than not, I don't know if that's something we would sell, um, but but an opportunity to come in and compete. You know, as you know, whether it's high school or, or transfers, we don't ever you know promise or offer starting roles. They're gonna have to come in and earn it and compete. The good thing is most of those guys are all playing and, and playing significant roles for us, so that's been good. James, to stick with that offensive line, obviously you've talked very highly in the past of Frank Leonard, but it's pretty hard for us to not take note of him out there ever since the analyst has been led back on the field. What, what's his presence been like and how has how it helped? It's loud. His presence is loud. Um, Frank's been great. Um, he really has. He's, uh, he's old school. He's really kind of like yin and yang. Trout is is very kind of uh, soft spoken. I wouldn't say soft spoken, but um, you know more measured. It's probably a good word. Um, and I think from an, from a just an approach standpoint, you really have total opposites. So I think they're really good complementary pieces of each other. I think the fact that those two have history before and Frank and Frank uh, coach Trout. I think that's helped. There's trust between those two guys in the room. Frank is very, very respectful of Trout and his position, um, and Trout uh, as well to Frank based on their history and his knowledge. So um, I think it's, I think they complement each other really well. And you know, uh, Frank is he's got a unique way to a unique way to get after guys and coach them hard. Uh, but he loves them and they love him. Um, I, I think that's that's been a real positive for us, and and um, you know also just an experienced coach who's coached in the NFL, coached in major college football, and obviously we go back a long way. So the fact that we go back a long ways and it goes back a long ways with Trout, I think that's really been helpful. Two more guys uh, going off of that. Is there anything you've seen from Trout this year compared to previous years? I know that Amanda 
Saturday you talked about how all those lines are a lot you know, closer than an interesting person. No, I, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I, I would uh, hope that all of us are, are getting better every single year. That's that's our objective in the off season. We're trying to get better as coaches. The players are trying to get better. Um, you pick up a few different things, but I think the biggest thing is is recruiting and development. So when you lose three guys to the NFL, you know we still have played a ton of those other guys and. Uh, they're coming in ready to play and ready to play at a high level. You know, you look at us from a schedule perspective and things like that, those guys have been able to come in really from game one and, and play well. So um, I think that's one of the, probably the biggest differences for us on both fronts, the O-line and D-line, is we got a ton of guys that have played a decent amount of football and we're bigger than we've been in the past. I think the combination of that size and experience has been valuable. James Drew made an interesting note this morning when we talked to him that on plays he's been able to, um, he's been able to move through the play a little bit better than he has in the past. How much has Andy and the way that he's designed the offense helped Drew, from your perspective, read a defense and feel comfortable in the pocket? Yeah, I think that's part of it, but it's also like I keep saying, Drew's a year older and a year more experienced. And, that's that's Coach K, and that is Drew, and that is Danny O'Brien, and that's all of it. But some of that is just being a year older and a year more experienced. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate.